you wanted the best, you've got the best podcast. The hottest, hottest. podcast in the, world. in the world. The Chris Voss Show, the preeminent podcast with guests so smart you may experience serious brain bleed. The CEOs, authors, thought leaders, visionaries, and motivators. Get ready, get ready. Strap yourself in. Keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the vehicle at all times. Because you're about to go on a monster education roller coaster with your brain. Now, here's your host, Chris Voss. Hi, folks. It's Voss here from thechrisvossshow.com. The Chris Voss Show. Welcome to the big show, my family and friends. It's an honor to have you guys as an audience, as I always like to say. We love you, and uh, we never get stop. We never can stop loving you. We just can't stop. Is there a song here? I don't know, man. There's probably a song lyric there. But we love you and uh, everything you do. Thanks for joining us. 14 years, 1,400 episodes. Be sure to further share your family and friends and relatives. We've got two to three uh, podcasts a day of just some amazing people coming on the show. We recently had the captain of the USS Theodore Roosevelt on the show. If you remember his viral experience in 2020 where he walked off a ship and everyone clapped for him. Uh, that just got published this morning. And we just had someone from the U.S. Department of Justice on. So amazing things there going on in the show check out those episodes because you're just going to be smarter and when you're smarter you're sexier and everybody wants to be more sexier don't they i mean i mean i just ooze sex when it comes down to it <laughs> and just I, that whole george clooney aspect that i have is just amazing so for further show your family friends and relatives goodreads.com for chess chris voss youtube.com for chess chris voss linkedin.com for chess chris voss and go uh see us on tiktok we're trying to be cool over there uh we have an amazing gentleman on the show if you ever thought about uh, writing your own book uh, getting your story down, uh, becoming popular, writing books and stories, uh, he may be able to help you. We have Joshua Lysek on the show, and he is uh, the author of the amazing new book, So Good They Call You a Fake. Command attention, monetize your talent stack, and become the uncontested authority in your niche. Just came out on June 15th, 2023, and you can order his book wherever fine books are sold. Uh, he's an amazing gentleman with amazing history, and uh, it's going to blow your mind at some of the things he's done. He's the author of the new amazing best-selling book we aforementioned, and a Wall Street Journal best-selling ghostwriter and internationally. Uh, he's written, a ghost written, I should say, more than 80 books that have been translated into several languages on everything from metabolic health and internet marketing to political tell-alls and current events reporting in 2011 he founded his company and a premier ghostwriting and concierge publishing firm welcome to the show joshua how are you i'm pretty dandy chris thanks for having me on today pretty dandy there we go man there's some uh was it 1920s language there dandy yes there we go. All right. Well, that's that must mean you're really excited. So, give us a dot com where people want you, where you want people to find you on the interwebs, or maybe where they want you to find them on the interwebs. <laughs> yeah, sure thing. The the most informative is going to be lysekghostwriting dot com. But my shenanigans, my most special and dangerous content is going to be on Twitter at ah, Lysek. with shenanigans, eh? Yes, shenanigans, you say. I feel like I I need a whole uh, library of 1920s uh, 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 commentary uh, words. Uh, so uh, welcome to the show. Congratulations on the new book. Uh, what motivated you want to write so good they call you a fake? Yes. So the type of authors that I get the best results for are people who are bona fide experts in their domain and their yeah. space. The problem is they have to rely on word of mouth in order to put food on the table. Yeah, that's a problem because yeah. at the top of their industry are people charging 100 times what they're charging or more. But those people have optimized for marketing. Mm -hmm. They've optimized for revenue, mm -hmm. lead gen, all the above. They've not optimized for results. So what mm -hmm. happens is charlatans who don't have any confidence problems make the most money in any given industry, <laughs> not the people who are good at what they do. Wow. I know hypnotists and hypnotherapists who charge 150 bucks mm -hmm. who are just spectacular at what they do. Mm -hmm. And then there are people who ch are charging $150,000 for their services in that same space who are beginner level at best, but there they you command go. those prices because they're not afraid to promote themselves. There now, you go. The people that I work with as, as experts, what they are not is authorities. Mm -hmm. What they are not is authorities. They're not the go-to person. 
Mm -hmm. And writing a book is what grants them that authority they've already earned. And what I advise is not just write a book, write a book that has a bombastic over the top promise and that it feels like clickbait. Like there is no <laughs> way you could fulfill that promise. And then I'll document your system, your step-by-step -step with no step skip process so that readers can actually fulfill that promise and get results that are so outsized that they're so good they have to be fake as I <laughs> enter the book into the picture. And the idea of the Mona Lisa with the Groucho Marx glasses on here uh -huh. is that people take one glance at you and they say, oh, oh, okay, well, that's obviously fake. Look, it's like a cartoonish, cartoonish, cartoonishly fake. But then they look closer and realize, oh, no, you're the real deal. Oh, wow. That's the first step to step up into the authority status that you've already earned. That's the key. You've already earned this. You're already the best, but no one knows who you are. And the reason no one knows who you are is because you're afraid of mm. being called a fake, of being called a fraud, of being seen as an imposter. That oh. That's your greatest strength. The negative reviews are golden. Haters are your most valuable marketers. <laughs> Sounds like my YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Hey, this is kind of interesting. So uh, a bombastic over approach, uh, uh, maybe some, uh, would you call it like click baiting sort of titles and things of that nature? 100%. Yes. Uh, a title that's not boring. <laughs> and uh, as there's more and more players competing in any given niche in any given space, what mm -hmm. it takes to get attention, the price of attention just goes up and up and up and up. And people who are focused on getting attention and monetizing it and whatnot, they're not focused on results. They're focused on revenue. So wow. I want to work with the underdogs, and I have. And I've helped turn people from nobodies into household names in their space. Awesome. And it's because of a book, but it's more than that. It's what goes into documenting their system, their way, their, their process, their thing, mm -hmm. and then packaging it in the form of a book and then also packaging it as a course a coaching offer a consulting experience a one-on-one -on -one professional service which is what the book teaches how to do is to it's, it teaches how to maximally monetize your skill set and your expertise which people don't know how to do but that's what they come to me for and i thought well i could put that in the book for them so that they could run with it themselves there you go. And that's really what you, you need to do with a book. It, it's amazing to me, you know, for years I kicked around, I'm like, should I do a book? Oh my God. You know, and I tried to get one launched several times. And then, uh, uh, it, it's amazing what a difference, how people look at you when you're an author of a book, partially because I think it's so hard to get one written. Um, but, uh, uh, it, it just gives you this level of authority. That's crazy, man. Like people, you know, people started bowing to me whenever I would go out and stuff after I wrote a book. <laughs> no, they didn't. <laughs> yeah, so the word author is in the word authority. Oh, all. there you go. So I didn't that, even think of that. Education. Yes, people are like, Joshua, what, what, so what do you know about getting noticed and making money online? Mm -hmm. I wrote the book on it. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> and the conversation is over. And that's how it's like for people in, in any industry. You know, Chris, I was talking to somebody in the home services industry right before this conversation on, on, on their show. And I was advising their, their audience of think like real estate agents, landscapers, plumbers, roofers, mm -hmm. not a single one of those people, those owners of those companies has written a book most likely in their oh, geography wow. in order to become the number one uncontested authority who gets all the cloud, all the credibility and all the great clients, mm -hmm. be the first person to write a book, be the first person to write a book Yeah, on that for that space, have copies there at the office, send them to clients. And what you do not want to do is have it be an, a CEO ego stroker, where the, there's like a full body shot of the CEO in their four piece suit on the front cover. And it's like the Jackson and Sons company story. <laughs> like, nobody cares about that. Nobody cares about the Jackson and Sons. Right, yeah. nobody cares. But if the Jackson Sons company, let's say, is a landscaping company that's been in town for 80 years and they do excellent work around beautification, and one of the things that they do is help people turn their boring old backyard into like a freaking wildlife habitat, that should be something you teach step by step with those steps gift how to do. Oh, well, Joshua, if I don't want to give away the farm. I don't want to, you know, to get all my secrets. That's the point. You have to do that. You have to do that. Otherwise, you will be seen as a fake. Like, well, okay, you have this bombastic clickbait promise and you don't actually fulfill it inside of the, the book. Well, then you're a scam. Mm -hmm. The 
metaphor I love to use, Chris, is Lego system. Hmm. And back in the 1990s, Lego sets like the children's toy was marketed as Lego system. Little kids, four, five, six, can build fantastic castles and spaceships and even moving functional machines. Even like Lego produces robots now that a six-year-old can build and mm -hmm. actually works and they could program it. A six-year-old can program a robot because of the Lego instructions. These things are step-by-step -step with no step skipped, reverse engineered from the outcome which is a functional robot a six-year-old can build. Oh, wow. And that's how we ought to write books. This is the type of books that I ghost write, mm -hmm. is what is that promise you're going to fulfill and then work backwards from there. What was everything that was required to get the reader to that point? That's your table of contents. Oh, okay. Your book just writes itself then. <laughs> Do you recommend people write memoir books uh, or interweave them with uh, you know, authority-type books or should they really <sighs> focus on authority? <laughs> There's something to be said for a memoir mashup. And my book, I do include quite a few stories mm -hmm. from my experiences. And even some about my own personal life, but most people don't really care. And I point out, unless you are someone literally famous, killed someone literally famous, slept with someone <laughs> literally famous, or found the buried treasure of someone literally famous, nobody cares. Note to they self, do. kill someone famous. <laughs> yes, don't do, do that, people. That's a joke. Yeah. They uh, really don't care. <laughs> <laughs> so it's better to focus on hmm what type of book will bring me people who will pay me a lot of money and they will say to me joshua i read your book i loved it but let me just tell you i don't have time to implement all this advice can i just pay you twenty five thousand to talk to my team for two hours and mm -hmm. i get pictures of people taking uh the e or emails and direct messages and text messages people sending me screenshots and pictures of the checks they get for implementing their authority books at companies Mm -hmm. 15, 20, 25, 50, 100,000 dollars to show up for two hours and say, here, we're going to walk you through my book and then we need leadership and answer questions. It's, it's wow. remarkable what an authority book can do. And yeah. uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a shame that more people don't write them, but I, I think I can solve that problem. There you go. And you've proven that with your, your I mean, you've, written, you've helped uh, co wrote 80 different uh, books and, and help them ghostwrite them and stuff. What about ghostwriting and, and, and things like that? I mean, I, we, we, you know, we have a lot of people. We just had the captain, uh, uh, Brett Crozier on the show. Uh, he didn't do ghostwriting, I don't think, but he had an assistant writer help him write it. We see that a lot with people. Um, is, is this something people can, uh, you know, look at, delve into and, uh, you know, uh, help, help, help get stuff written because you know, a lot of people that are successful, they either don't have the time to sit down and write a book or maybe they won't write it in the right way. And so having that format in a ghostwriter might help them. It could, it could. I'm a bit of an elitist in that I say most people should not write a book and nor, oh, should, most wow. people write a, a, nor, nor should most people even hire a ghostwriter to write a, a book. I know okay. that's kind of against the unpopular, it's a bit unpopular now to say that sort of thing because self-publishing technology allows anyone to write a book. Well, yeah. the problem is, Chris, anyone is writing a book and they're selling one copy ever in their lifetime to mom. <laughs> and it's right. There's like 32.6 million books available on Amazon mm. right now. Yeah. Roughly 99.99% of them have sold fewer than 10 copies. It's, mm -hmm. it's atrocious. And chat GPT and other AI tools is increasing the quantity while lowering the quality simultaneously of oh, the yeah. average number of books and how good they are that's um, out there. Ghostwriting is not what feels like a pay to place word of a relationship, which is the perception mm -hmm. that it has. Like, oh, I can just, you know, just show up and, and uh, anybody can uh, you know, pay a lot of money and they have a book written and then I put my name on it. It's not really like that. It's more like an interview and interviewee relationship. And then it's the writer's job to document the system, but then structure it such a way that readers can easily access the material and get results from it and then refine it. So it's got all the little tricks, tips, techniques, and tactics of uh, an effective book. There you go. Is what the job is. Yeah. There you go. So do you, did you write the book and hope that people would use your services more or just to help people do? What was your goal? What do you hope people get from the book and walk away from? Yeah, yeah. So here's the, here's the situation. Every other ghostwriter has written a book called Here's How to Write a Book. <laughs> they, 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 they all do. There's even people who follow me on uh, Twitter 
who will copy and paste stuff from my website and put it on their web website. Like oh, really? Like ways that you know you're good is when people steal your stuff. Yeah, and creative like, swiping. Outright plagiarize yeah. you. Yeah. I'm not concerned because they charge like one fiftieth what I do, and so we know it's not going to be any good. And if they're just wow. parroting the greatness, well, then it's they don't know where greatness is headed, so it's not going to work out. Mm -hmm. But the book I was supposed to write is how to write a book by the ghostwriter. But that's a boring book. Plus, it doesn't contribute to the conversation. What I found is most difficult for an aspiring author that I want to work with, the, 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 the actual authority, mm -hmm. the expert who does not have authority and wants the authority because they're an expert, not some schmuck or grifter. Those sort of people, what they need is a complete replacement of their mindset, a uh -huh. worldview, a transformation. Mm -hmm. And they need the ability to self-promote. And they also need to know step by step with no step skipped how to monetize their expertise. Mm -hmm. And this is the problem with actual experts is they're so good at what they do. They don't know how to package and, and productize it and price it because yeah. they're just good at getting results, yeah. but they're broke, unfortunately. So for 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 bucks, I can mm -hmm. solve those people's problem with the book. I, and then they'll be able to afford me one day. You see, <laughs> I see how this is. I, I, I see how you're working here. Uh, what are some other myths or aspects that people might have it trying to go from the level you're trying to take them to from being experts to to being that multi that ultra level something that happens when you're on the threshold of true greatness mm -hmm. and this gets the title of the book you begin to cultivate organic haters <laughs> randos who are making fun of your appearance mm -hmm. or are claiming you're a fake a fraud and a liar Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm one of the only ghostwriters in human history who's ever earned more than $1 million a year ghostwriting. Wow. Multiple years in a row. Wow. And I get people accusing me of photoshopping those uh, screenshots that I post. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's hilarious. Like, oh, there's no way anyone can earn that much. Obviously yeah. fake. And they, yeah. always use bad, they always use bad verbs, I call them. Not adverbs, but bad verbs. <laughs> where they're, they're making a wild accusation or, they're, or accusing someone of lying or they are lying themselves. They use adverbs. Mm -hmm. because this is a little uh, little technique that I, I pick up as a professional persuader is if someone is inventing a story or wants you to believe their version of events, they'll use a lot of adverbs. Oh, that's interesting. Yes. So my, my haters all use adverbs. Like there's literally no way this guy did this. Absolutely not. In fact, let me show you something. This is kind of fun. Uh, I teach people to monetize the mo madness of the mob. And I do this myself. And so the, one of the opening pages of the book, as you can see here, is a tweet from one of my, uh, my best fans. Mm -hmm. He says, dude, you'll likely block me for this, but you know you didn't personally write all those books. We know you didn't write all those books. Why keep lying about it? It's just weird. <laughs> That's your number one fan. <laughs> so I shared that, and I said, this is a critical teachable moment. If you're not getting accused of fraud because your results are so mind-blowing to normies, you aren't challenging yourself. Be so good, they call you a fake. There you go. And that tweet is the, the gist of, of the book. But people don't promote themselves as much as they should. The great ones. I mean, the, the, the grifters are on everybody's feed 24-7, retargeting like crazy, maxing out, the, maxing out all of their ad budgets, right? It's the great ones who are charging 150 bucks for one session. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, you get a, your first session free. <laughs> <laughs> and so they're so good at what they do, but they, they suck at monetizing. And yeah. there's, a, there's, a, there's a mishmash. And so that's just the way it is. And I've learned and as a ghostwriter working across all these industry and ghostwriting for authentic fakes, if that makes sense. Actual people who have no idea what they're talking about. And I had to invent, <laughs> I had to invent wholesale advice on their behalf. Seriously. For me to do because I ghostwritten books on that space already. So I wow. can get something that was passable as, 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 as workable content. <laughs> <laughs> crap you know i mean I, the internet has created people that can do that i mean they can they can totally fake who they are they can just make stuff up and you're just like seriously i it, it, it's just amazing what the internet has been able to do with people and just you know you can create a whole persona you know we see these people that are these instagram people that get really successful and they they pay like i think it's like 40 or 60 bucks in la and you can go down and pretend like you're sitting in a in a uh, fake luxury plane and take a whole photo shoot you know 
and people are like, oh, they're flying private jets everywhere. They must be successful and rich, you know. You're in cars for photo shoots and videos and stuff. It's crazy all the different fakery they can go. But that marketing, like you mentioned, is is a real key behind it in uh, you know fronting that whole success thing. And 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 what you mentioned earlier, you know, where people attack your body, what you look like and stuff. You know, for years on YouTube, we we'd have people attack me. And they're like, here you have fat fingers. You know, or my, I, I love the joke. They're like, hey, you're fat. And, you know, yeah, I'm doing it like a product review, you know, or an interview. And they're like, yeah. you're fat. And you're like, well, thanks, Captain Obvious. So, like, I had no idea that I was fat. But thanks for pointing that out because now I know. But, uh, you know, and, and we're used to having, like, competitors with other channels that are trying to compete with ours. You know, they'll write hateful comments in the thing. And, and you'll be like, why are they running hateful? And you're like, oh, they have a YouTube channel and they have a video up that's like ours. And they're trying to. They're angry because ours is beating them on the thing. So uh, really insightful. And then you you help people design the program that they need to do because there's a lot of different steps to this uh, that's just not publishing your book. Um, yeah, a book, a book should not come later. And that's why I realized I couldn't just write a book about mm -hmm. writing books because I don't just do that. And I also don't just do books. There's so mm -hmm. much that, that comes before. This is mm -hmm. a 17-chapter book. We don't talk about books until Chapter 8. Oh, wow. The first seven chapters are what I call your system for genius, mm. meaning the thing that you do better than no better than anyone else does it that gets results that are indistinguishable from miracles, magic, or just simply a, a mad genius like mm -hmm. you. And Magic. how to document that? How to package it in such a way that any random internet stranger can pick up your system and get the results you've promised? And teaching go. how to do that is the most valuable contribution I can make to planet Earth. There you so go. That's the first seven chapters. And then we turn how to turn your system into a book, then into a course, then into coaching and consulting, then into a once-off service, and then into an ongoing high-end premium service, and then how to sell those services, and then, of course, market those services, and then where to take your, your own talent stack uh, next, what to add next. There you go. And that's what a lot of people like to do. I mean, they, they, they want to turn it into a speaker's gig so they can go speaking and everything else and all that good stuff. What have we touched on in your book that uh, people should uh, know about, or at least tease out? You know, they got to buy the book to read the good, the deets, <laughs> as it were. What's something that they should they should tease out of it, you're saying? Like what, what, uh, what have we covered or touched on that you maybe want to tease out in the book? One of the reasons why people choose me over ghostwriting agencies that might be more famous or even ghostwriters who are older or who came recommended by from some New York Times, whatever, best-selling author, although I've done the, the traditional bestsellers and those have been, have been a lot of fun. The reason people come to me is because I'm also a certified hypnotist. I'm the only oh. person in the world who is certified as both a ghostwriter and a hypnotist. Now, oh, wow. what those both seem to have in common is that they're both misunderstood. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first thing. So ghostwriting is, oh, okay, so I just pay somebody to write a book, and, and then oh, they, they put, you put their name on it. Ho, oh, ho, okay, whatever. That's not what ghostwriting is. And hypnosis is not a person with a, with a pendulum on stage making people bark like a dog, okay? Mm -hmm. That's not what it is. That's more like an illusionist or a magician or, frankly, a street performer. Hypnosis is the art and science of belief change. Oh. Professional hypnotists are familiar with the latest up-to-date research on psychology, specifically the study of the subconscious mind and how to work within it so that people don't have to use willpower or try to work really, really hard to create new habits for themselves, but about identity. How mm. can someone, a hypnotist, alter someone's beliefs about themselves and about reality such that the new behaviors they want come automatically? Oh, wow. And so hypnosis is usually used for basic stuff, like how do I get better sleep? How do I feel better about life? How do I work through all of the trauma that's come up from this broken relationship that I'm enduring? How do I lose weight? <laughs> Questions that are really like that. Yeah, That's what most hypnotists do, is meet with people for those sorts of issues. And the results are so good they call them fake. <laughs> and that's why hypnosis is known as pseudoscience to a lot of so-called institutional experts mm -hmm. who are in the, in the medical community. Mm -hmm. Because they say, oh, there's no way you could do that for someone after one session, two sessions. No way. And then they quietly book a session with the hypnotist to help, their own, <laughs> to help them with their own issue, right? Uh, after what they tell their colleagues. Um, mm -hmm. But hypnosis 
and ghostwriting come together. And I like to say that a book is a long form self hypnosis script. Oh, wow. that's the best. That's the best perspective that I've come to. And so I teach how to apply the principles of subconscious persuasion into the form of a book or a course coaching, consulting, and so on, so that you can create belief change so that people will feel motivated and inspired to read more of your book. Because mm -hmm. the more of your book they read, the more likely they are to market the book for you. Definitely. And the number one way to sell books is word of mouth marketing. Mm -hmm. So if you want to make a lot of money in life, you need to learn hypnosis. There is a one-to-one -one relationship between the two of those. Mm -hmm. And that's why you tend to see the richest people in any in industry are students of hypnosis, by really? the way. There are a significant number of Fortune 500 CEOs who are professional certified hypnotists, and no one knows this, by the way. It's it's a best kept secret. I need uh, to learn to be a hypnotist. It's the same thing with with billionaires, with serial and entrepreneurs, rich as heck investors, and people who are in the self help and spirituality spaces who mm -hmm. seem to create a new best selling book every six months. They're all professional certified hypnotists. Wow. Well, they don't talk about that because they want to keep the secrets to themselves. <laughs> That's interesting. I need to learn to be a hypnotist. But yeah, there's a lot of people that uh I mean you're you're looking to motivate people to uh do what they do what they want done and, and be successful mm -hmm. in it. So it makes a lot of difference in, in helping them achieve that. Um so do we want to talk about any of the services you provide on your website? Yeah, one of the most interesting ones is called Ghost Publishing, and it mm -hmm. is, it's, it's my own in innovation that combines the best of traditional publishing mm -hmm. and the best of self-publishing and creates a new hybrid of it, you, know, you, you, you might call it. And so what people like about traditional publishing is the standardization, that there's a process, there's a checklist, there's, there's what works and what doesn't work. There's what readers expect to see and what they don't expect to see. And so if you look at any old self-published book, it, it just looks like crap, <laughs> right, frankly. Most of them look like amateur jobs that were figured out on a weekend. Mm -hmm. Not a great presentation for someone who wants to be perceived as an authority. It's just not. But self-publishing does offer freedom, speed, much higher royalties. Five bucks a copy sold versus five cents. That's 100x different. If you have an audience, do you want five cents per copy sold or five bucks? You're not an idiot. Yeah. Of course you're going to choose five bucks if you yeah. already have a big audience, right? Yeah. So bringing those two together and then doing it on behalf of an author so they don't have to figure it out themselves, that's what ghost publishing is. Kind of like ghost writing, but you know, somebody else does all the work for publishing too. Mm -hmm. Do you recommend most people self-publish or try and get the, you know, the big publishers, uh, that auto book or show, try and get them to, to, to pick you up? I know that can be a whole different. So uh, I have ghostwritten independently published books for people who were previously traditionally published. Oh, wow. And I've ghost written traditional published books for people who were previously independently published. Oh. But it also depends on what, but it depends on all of what the objective is. Mm -hmm. If you want to make as much money as possible, independent publishing, absolutely. Really? Wow. If you've already done the work of building up an audience, independent publishing, absolutely. There is story after story after story from my clients, from friends of mine who have been approached by the big five publishers and offered book deals for their second or their third book after the first one or two just dominated as independent published books. And they turn them down with a slap to the face and the door slamming in the, in the back behind because the because the, the offers were so bad. Wow, so bad. Um, because what traditional publishing is is it's selling clout. It's selling mm. clout. Some people need clout, though. I'll put it this way. So, for example, university professors who want to get published in their industry more or in their domain more and more, they want to be um, chosen, appointed to certain committees they need like institutional backing mm -hmm. a public a traditional publishing deal makes sense for them it's going to be a loss of money most likely it's going to be an extraordinary expense in terms of time and energy and probably money that goes into traditional publishing mm -hmm. but to be able to say this such and such person is uh is a guest lecturer at ivy league school and has this md and also an uh, and there's also a phd and they're published by Simon and schuster in the circles that that person inhabits, status is more important than what success. And so having status signifiers is a lot more important for them rather than having a book that 100,000 people have read. So like this, this is a good example. So this is a cardiologist named Dr. Philip Ovedia. 
It's the, uh, it's what's won two two major international book awards, independently published, mm -hmm. and it sold twenty thousand copies. Wow. And we did everything associated with this with this bad boy right here, like the like it looks like a real book, right? Mm -hmm. It's not something we threw together in Microsoft Word over the weekend. It looks like a real book. People think it's a real book, real book, right? Like oh, it looks like a traditionally published book. Mm -hmm. And we have clients whose books are in bookstores because we use the typical process. Same with mine. Like, oh, okay, this, this looks like a this looks like a, a real book, real cover, and everything. Now, something I do do with my book that I don't do with my clients because it's a little risky is I make several mistakes on purpose in my book. Really? From typographical errors to formatting errors and whatnot, because I understand that from the, the rep from the reputation management industry's perspective, the four point two to four point four star average is supreme in terms of highest credibility 4.2 to 4.4 stars mm -hmm. my book is so good it's that's going to be a problem i'm going to get mountains of five star reviews easily yeah so i need one star reviews and i want one star reviews from people i don't want as clients and what do people i don't want as clients have in common they care about image over substance uh -huh. so they're going to point out a couple of egregious typos and mistakes that are in here on purpose <laughs> and they're going to take pictures of it and they're going to put them on one star reviews on Amazon. Yeah. And then we're going to say, look at this idiot who doesn't know how to publish a real book. And what's not going to be in the review, this is like called like the white space or the dog that's not barking. There's no negative reviews about the book's content itself. Yeah, it's just, It'll just be idiots who are, who yeah. are whining about typos. Yeah. So I don't like his clients, people who care about image over substance. Well, I can't have a single typo in my book. It doesn't have to be good. I just don't want typos. So what yeah. I'm doing is I'm both attracting and I'm repelling. So there will be people who will read the one star reviews and say, really, that's you, you took the time out of your data point out of typo. Nobody cares about typos. <laughs> Nobody important cares about typos, rather, is, is, is usually the perspective. Like, show me a CEO who cares about typos, and that's not a CEO. They do not care whatsoever. The CEO can send embarrassing emails. But they're the CEO. They can do whatever they want. And that's who I want as clients, not their assistance, assistance, assistance intern who cares about proofreading. There you go. You know, now I feel better about how I don't have 100% five-star reviews. Is part of the thing that if you if if people see 100% five-star reviews, they start thinking it's fake. Is that part of it? 100%. Yes, because it's easy to it's easy to game the system and get fake yeah. five-star reviews. We see it all the time. I see it all the time on podcasts, man. I'll see that I'll see like and there's like little typos that they make in the five-star reviews that you can tell it was a bot that delivered it. But I'll see podcasts where they paid a bot to to do their reviews, and I'm like, "How do you have you know?" Because we've been around for 14 years, I'm like, "How do you have a new podcast that you started like two or three months ago? It has you know 30 episodes, and it has 300 five star reviews <laughs> with no with no no one bad ones, right?" Yeah, and, it's really uh, it's really sketchy, and so yeah. I I need to maximize my credibility, and plus it it also makes for a hilarious story in teaching my clients. Yeah, like I I do what I can to teach my clients a thing, and then do the thing myself. Mm -hmm. And one of those things is doing what it takes to get negative reviews, because in order to get attention, command attention, and mm -hmm. presence online, and to have mm -hmm. influence, we need both negative and positive attention. No. Oh. And people who are afraid of negative attention, I don't want to work with those people. I want them to buy my book first, change their mind because I'm a hypnotist, and then they're going to hire me. You see, it's dangerous to get a sales call of hypnotist. <laughs> Maybe I should get write a book that says, you're going to hate this book and give me bad reviews. I don't know. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Now, now, speaking of, speaking of that, uh, there has been this hilarious and fun story. Uh, I must tell you about it if you haven't seen it so far. That is on this topic and that is relevant. Let's see if I can find... Uh, yes, here it is. So it's gone viral this uh, this past week. I'll show you. I'll pull, pull a picture of you. A uh, picture of it for you, real quick. This right here. Come in and try the worst coffee one woman on TripAdvisor <laughs> had in her life. <laughs> I think so I that, that coffee computer. shop has exploded in growth. They had to shut down that day because they ran out of literally everything. Really? They ran up. They've gone viral on a bit of an utter sensation, and we've got people like lined up around the block uh, to this day. That was weeks ago. <laughs> oh my god! That you got to get one star reviews. You need to be you need to be cartoonishly fake. That's the symbolism <laughs> of Mona Lisa and the Groucho Marx glasses on the cover of the book. <laughs> must be cartoonishly fake. People must say, "Ha, huh, that's fake. Look at that's stupid." Yeah. And then look closer, and they go. In my case, oh, 
wait a second, all of the negative reviews are people calling out typos. No one's actually dismissing the content of the book. Yeah. That is what I am going for. It's an, it's an advanced yeah. technique and it's risky. So yeah. I don't do that for my own client, for all the clients, but I, I have to practice what I'm going to preach or else I will not preach it. There you go. Well, that makes sense. Like I say, I'm always suspect of if I go into Yelp or any other place and it's 100% good reviews, I'm like, I don't know about that. And most of the negative reviews that I've had on my book or on the podcast, I usually like, I think the first ones are always like, I thought this guy was somebody else, you know, and, uh, but it's never about the content. Like I had one that I don't know, it must have been for a competitor, but he wrote, he wrote, Chris Foss is, uh, you know, he's really bombastic and has a lot of energy. His reviews are good, but he has a little too much energy. And you're like, what? <laughs> I was like, it's like, but like you say, it doesn't attack the content. What else haven't we touched on that we want to tease out? Looks like our audience thought the, the, the picture was funny. Thanks, Steve Garfield. Yes, yes. Uh, ne so so uh, ne negative reviews are a thing you can use to market them. There's a best-selling <laughs> author by the name of David Goggins. He reads one-star reviews of his book called Can't Hurt Me. Uh -huh. And he records those, and he publishes those. Uh, those, those, those videos of his. It's, yeah. it's so wise to turn user-generated content, both positive and negative, into something that benefits you. Um, mm -hmm. I have a, a friend and client. His name is uh, Scott Adams. He's the creator of the Dilbert comic strip. Yeah. Something that he points out is that Haters are really mascots. <laughs> and you got to give your mascot something out mm -hmm. there. And one thing that I do when I get mascots is I share their stuff. Mm -hmm. Or if they will post something that is bitter and angry and miserable, uh, what will uh, I do? I'll say thank you for sharing. <laughs> because now I'm reaching new people I otherwise would not have reached. On the back Maybe. of the book, I have... So I, I think this is where there's like an overlap. So this client, Dr. Philip Avedia, his book, he authored the foreword to uh, my book. Yeah. And he says, what you want to do is to start an internet firestorm that spreads your name farther than you could have on your own. Mm -hmm. That's what the so good they call you a fake concept is. It's not for beginners. It's not for everyone. It's definitely not for grifters and schmucks. Oh. That's for sure. Um, because they don't have a system. They have a ghostwriter who makes up a system on the spot and then pretends it's real. Had a few of those. Wow, that's a, that's amazing, man. That is that is freaking amazing. Uh, you know, it's uh, these are these are really insightful. Now, now you made it so I sleep much better with my uh, hateful reviews. Uh, there's a podcast that I, I like. It's 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 two gals, and uh, and they, I see them a lot on TikTok, and they're like, "I'm sick of this." Is basically their Oh, I've seen that. They're yes. a thing. And they're really funny, but they will sit down and be like, hey, let's pick up the uh, ugliest, uh, you know, what, are the, what, are, what is the what is the horriblest comment someone has written or haters have written? And they'll read it and laugh about it. And, and they turn into content. And it's pretty brilliant. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, really definitely. Is. So well, both, been really both positive and angry reviews are, are excellent and 100% worth sharing. Yes. I want you to hate me, people. <laughs> there you go. Well, this has been really insightful to have you on the show, Joshua. Anything else you want to tease out before we go? At this at this moment, no. That pretty much covers covers all of it. So good they call you fake. We'll have come out June fifteenth, twenty twenty three, and that that same week slash weekend, the hardcover, soft cover, paperback, and ebook and audiobook will all have been uh, available that weekend. There you go. There you go. Check it out. Order up wherever fine books are sold. So good they call you fake. Command attention. Monetize your talent stack and become the uncontested authority in your niche. All that's good stuff you need because that's that's one of the biggest problems people do is they have great expertise. They they may write a book, but unless you get the marketing right, no one cares. I mean, we get pitched a lot of books that way. So uh, for the okay. show, uh, we get yeah. we get, and then we see the bad covers too. I mean, the, the cover is like what's that old line? Uh, the cover sells the book or whatever. Uh, I get the bad covers and you're just like, oh my God, dude, did your kid draw that in them? <laughs> so there you go. Uh, I, I, unironically, yes, the kid probably did. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually, come to think of it, I've actually had people that on the show that I think have done that. So uh, thank you very much, Joshua, for coming on the show. We really appreciate it. My pleasure, Chris. Thank you.
There you go. Thanks, my honest, for tuning in. Go to goodreads.com, Fortress Chris Foss, youtube.com, Fortress Chris Foss, linkedin.com, Fortress Chris Foss. See the big LinkedIn newsletter over there and the big LinkedIn group. Uh, and also go support us on TikTok, where I'm just waiting for the haters to show up, I guess, at this point. Thanks for tuning in. Be good to each other. Stay safe. And we'll see you guys next time. And that should have us out.